<laughs> I'm Marian Lee. I'm a member of Central Lutheran Church here in Minneapolis. I've been a lifelong Lutheran. Um, started out in the ELCA, ELC, then the ALC, and finally the ELCA. As a wife of a pastor, the church has been central in our lives. So <clears throat> along the way, we've had numerous experiences. But the one that really stands out in my mind was a trip we took to Tanzania in 2003 when we volunteered for five weeks with the Oringa Diocese. The Oringa Diocese is a companion of the St. Paul Area Synod. And these two have a very vital relationship with uh, many people coming and going. My husband worked with pastors, but my role was primarily working with different groups with conversational English. They're eager to hear and to try to improve their English speaking. So that was a great experience. But even uh, more memorable was worship experiences in Tanzania. The people are so exuberant, and usually there'd be several choirs singing. And we couldn't understand the language, mm -hmm. but it really didn't matter because you could feel the enthusiasm they had for the church, for their faith, um, was just a marvelous experience. And most remarkable of all, because my husband has done some work in stewardship, was to see multiple offerings taken at the same service. Mm -hmm. So there'd be, there were, might be two, three, or more and service um, offerings often of things like corn that they'd grown or other produce or it could be live chickens so it wasn't necessarily money that was brought in offerings it could be a variety of, of things but this too was done with such joy something that I'm afraid we often don't experience in some of our churches. We tend to be a bit more reserved in our country and not so free with our feelings. So what did you bring back from your trip to Tanzania in terms of ideas or things that you wanted to do in your own congregation? I think it was more this feeling of um, the, that relationships were so important there. Yeah. They're not so concerned with having things. It's, it's building those relationships. And that, that is just so, seeing so different from the way we operate in our more materialistic society. Uh, and also this feeling you're more convinced than ever of our abundance and of how free they are, even though they, in our minds, are lacking in so many things, yet they're so free to give and with their care and love that they share. So those were some. Can you tell me any more about the, com the relationship between the, the Oringa Diocese and the, which synod was it? St. Paul, Paul Area Synod. There are groups going from St. Paul on a regular basis mm -hmm. and many of the congregations, I don't know the percentage, have a companion congregation in Tanzania, in the Oringa Diocese. So between the congregation here then and their companion congregation, 
There are people going back and forth. Many of the people sponsor scholarships for students because although children are, <clears throat> education is considered to be a right for all the children and there should be universal, it does cost money. Um, often it's for uniforms, uh, supplies, so there is cost involved. And uh, many of, I've heard of congregations who are sponsoring many, many students, individual sponsorships, groups, uh, providing those scholarships. So that's been, I think, a real important piece. Plus this um, exchange of people. So people from St. Paul going, and they have helped to bring some of the Tanzanian people over. We have been privileged to have Tanzanians in our own home. And that's um, an experience that we value. Yeah. How does your church, um, how are you able to continue those relationships? For us, uh, there's not as much continuing that relationship because we are part of the Minneapolis Area Synod. At the time that we went to Tanzania, my husband just finished uh, working with the St. Paul Area Synod. He was an interim assistant bishop. And so we had that connection at the time. That's how we learned about the program. And in Minneapolis, um, the synod, the African synod that we're connected with, we couldn't easily visit at the time. I believe it's Nigeria, and there have been problems as far as going back and forth. Now, however, people are going to Nigeria from Minneapolis. But when we did it, that was not being done. Do you have any final thoughts on just the whole program of having companion synods and making these bonds across the, the world? I think it's very important. And it, um, it really broadens out this whole global mission idea and helps us to see that we're brothers and sisters in Christ and to build those bonds of relationships that I think are, are really critical. We're used to, all my life, I've been used to missionaries going overseas and then they'd come home on their sabbatical and tell us about what they did, but not ever being able to really experience that. And I think the Companion Synod idea has opened that to people and made um, those trips possible to, to do for just average people. Yeah. All right, well, thank you.